it's that time again and yes I'm going to be taking a look at another Kenner 12 inch Star Wars action figure from the late 90s and this week shaking things up a little bit I'm going to be looking at Princess Leia in her Hoth gear outfit. Of course, there weren't a great many female characters in the original trilogy, so this figure represents something of a departure to what we've seen traditionally in terms of the usual moulds that they would use for their human characters. So I think this figure offers something a little bit different, a little bit more distinctive, uh, and stands out in this collection, which is already pretty diverse and visually distinctive with its various aliens and characters made up with all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So if we start off by looking at the packaging, of course, no real surprises here if you've seen any other figures in my recent videos looking at this line. Sadly, gone is the folding uh, flapping cover, which I, I happen to really, really like, so I think it's a real shame that we don't have that anymore. But what we have is this window display with the figure on the inside. Of course, behind the figure in the inlay, we have that green lightsaber, which will be familiar to anyone who collected the Power of the Force line in the three and three quarter scale at this time. Of course, we have the Starfield, around the edge of the packaging so we can see the various stars and clouds which is quite nice uh, sadly no TIE fighters no Death Stars anymore but this is still pretty attractive now if we flip it and look at the side panel we can see uh, an image of Princess Leia that's taken directly from the film uh, of course in a Hoth gear this is a great image and it works really well it's consistent with the other figures in the lines of course you can stack these up on the shelf and you have a pretty diverse range of characters that's pretty fun to look at then finally if we flip over the packaging and look at the reverse we can see the other figures that are available to collect in this series. Uh, some different ones this time, of course, we see Chewbacca in Chains, which I've already looked at in a previous video and probably enough said, but we can see Figure in Dan, uh, we can see Luke Skywalker in his Jedi gear, and we can see the Emperor, who I also covered just a few weeks ago. Now, we have another image of Princess Leia at the bottom of the packaging here, and this is nice enough. And whilst there's not an awful lot else going on with this packaging, I actually do quite like the fact that we don't see images of the other figures in this line just their portraits from the films because that made it a little bit more mysterious about what these figures are actually going to look like and it left a lot to the imagination as a kid. Moving on to the figure itself as I said before of course this figure does represent something of a departure from the other figures we've seen in this series so far but remarkably managed to be fairly consistent with everything else that we've seen in terms of costuming and tailoring. Now I've got to point out the head sculpt and this likeness uh, in particular. Now we've seen in this series that they can be pretty hit or miss and generally they're quite soft uh, in terms of how close they are as a likeness but I do think that this is a really unfortunate example of where things just don't quite work at all. I have to say I actually think this is a pretty bad likeness of Carrie Fisher. This doesn't really look an awful lot <laughs> like her at all. Part of that might be because they've gone for the rooted hair uh, which as you can see obviously over time it definitely has that problem of fraying and becoming quite loose and a bit straggly as you can see with mine here. Uh, I have no problem with rooted hair. I actually think you know if it's preserved correctly and treated well uh, then it looks really really good uh, but I'm not sure if it's really worked particularly well with this figure and I'm not sure whether it's distracting from the head sculpt. Also the hair here just looks too dark like this is quite a deep dark black uh, whereas of course Carrie Fisher had a sort of a lighter browner uh, kind of texture to her hair so this doesn't really quite work it looks too stark especially in, in contrast to the white outfit likewise the eyes just look too big and too dark as well and I'm not entirely convinced by the other proportions on this face either the ears look a little bit too large the nose just looks a little bit too wide and long and all combined, it just looks a little too harsh and fierce <laughs> for, for Princess Leia. It's just, it's just not quite right. So I think it's well-intentioned, but uh, sadly, it just misses the mark. The costume on this figure is really interesting. It's made of a really stiff, thick cotton material that makes it fairly robust and it actually has quite an interesting texture to the touch as well. Now, as you can see, there are puffy elements to it, which I quite like. Now, as you can see, the outer gilet jacket part is a separate piece, so you can remove this, which is pretty cool. As you can see, this is quite padded as well, which is nice. So this has a more fluffy uh, padded texture, which is quite good. Her belt is also removable and there's a sort of velcro seam at the front there as well. Uh, so this is quite nicely designed. It's fairly accurate to what we see on screen as well, which is good. And you do have the possibility of having two distinct looks here, which is great. These hands are also very interesting. These are very different to the hands that we'd usually see in this series. Of course, the male figures generally had those Action Man rubber hands, which are quite big and chunky, whereas these are more genteel. These are more sculpted, finer, and actually have individual features. And of course, each one is 
distinctly different. One is a gripping hand and one is more of an open palm, which is fantastic. As we've come to expect from this line, we do get rubber boots, but these are individual unique boots. We don't see these on any other figure in the line, which is cool. So they definitely have their own distinctive quality, I suppose, which is nice. They are the standard rubber boots though. So of course, all the issues that we have with those in terms of uh, impacting how a figure can stand freely definitely applies here. You're gonna need a stand to stand these up. But other than that, these look quite nice. There's some nice sculpting going on here, and we see some nice paint washes as well to really emphasize that sculpt. So again, they look pretty authentic, a little bit oversized and chunky as rubber boots tend to be, but actually quite effective. Articulation is pretty standard on this figure. She does have a swivel at the neck, so that head can rotate all the way around if you want it to. She's got ball joints in the shoulders, so those arms kick up and out at a pretty healthy distance. Now, there's going to be a little bit of resistance from this costume <laughs> because it is so stiff, but that's absolutely fine. It doesn't actually impact too much on the articulation. There's a single joint at the elbow, and of course, there is a pin swivel at the wrist there, so the hand can rotate all the way around and it hinges forwards and backwards. There's a straight swivel at the waist, meaning she can only turn side to side. There is a ball joint in the hip, so the legs kick out to the side. They also kick forwards and back, and then she has those rubber legs. So they do technically bend to about 90 degrees, but as I've mentioned on many previous videos, it's not the greatest articulation in the world, and there is a tendency for these to want to snap back to the standing position. She comes with just one accessory, which is the blaster rifle, but it does have an action feature, so it comes with its own missile. And the idea, of course, is that you can plug this in and fire it. Now, I must say that it is spring-loaded, and back in the day, this used to work absolutely perfectly. You'd simply press down on the scope, and it would launch the missile a fair few yards. It used to have quite a kick on it, but now, sadly, with age, it can barely make its way out of the chamber. But despite being a bit chunky and a little bit out of scale, like it just looks far too big for Princess Leia, she actually holds it with no problems. And it's actually well sculpted for her hands. So her hands can hold this nice and tightly in the right hand. She can grip that handle there, which is great. Meanwhile, her left hand can support the barrel nice and comfortably. So this actually looks quite natural. Uh, and all in all, uh, this is a pretty nice figure. I actually really like the costume, the tailoring on this figure in particular. It looks really uh, neat and trim and it looks visually quite nice. And it's great that she can hold her blaster rifle in quite a natural position. It looks like it's meant to be held this way. So I think it looks really good all in all. Obviously this figure is really held back by that head sculpt. It's just my opinion, but I, I just, I really don't like it. <laughs> Pure and simple. But I do think this is quite a cool figure otherwise and quite an interesting costume for this character. So uh, I think it's an interesting one because it seems to highlight both the best and worst that this series had to offer as a whole. If you enjoyed this video please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.